Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE. And let's build a fun SWR demonstration circuit that only requires a 100 watt HF transmitter or transceiver, a piece of small diameter coaxial cable, and a capacitor. No test equipment is needed, assuming that the transmitter has an internal SWR bridge. I've shown this circuit a few times to college EE students who all knew what to expect but nevertheless enjoyed touching the coax and feeling the SWR as heat. I really enjoy these types of simple demonstrations and thought that including one in a video would be interesting to the general viewers of this channel. Let's begin by adding a piece of small diameter Teflon coax similar to RG316 that's a 20 feet long. Other types of coax can be used also. A small diameter Teflon coax works nicely because it's high temperature. And if you use something like RG174, which is polyethylene, you need to be a little bit careful not to melt it. But we start off with a 20 foot piece of coax and let's short the end of it out. Now we could leave it open or shorted, but shorting it's nice because there's no shock hazard if we short the end of the piece of transmission line out. And if it's open, you need to uh, insulate the center conductor so you don't touch it. And in this case, what we do is we run the, we're running the transmission line at an infinite SWR. And of course, we see a rotation starting at, at zero here, going clockwise. And the reason it's spiraling inward is due to the loss in the cable. Now, if we increase this length of transmission line to a point such as right here, we can put a capacitor to ground. And this capacitor now will give a match to the transmitter that's a one-to-one -one SWR, which is very interesting. And we could have easily done, stopped at this point right here and done a shunt inductor, which would also have matched it. We could have stopped over here somewhere and done a series capacitor over here and done a series inductor. All those are things I've covered before, but those are the four four places on a, on a Smith chart where you can ba um, match to 50 ohms with a single component. So let's bring this, this line back up here and put a capacitor back in here. And the frequency right now is 10 megahertz and we needed 36 feet of cable to do this. The reason I, I did this was because over here on the low impedance side of the Smith chart, the uh, current in the transmission line will be high and over here the current will be low. And that's what we need to do to show this uh, circuit in, in action. However, um, 36 feet may be a little bit too much. There's no reason you have to use 36 feet. We can certainly up the frequency. If we up the frequency here, what we see is, well, let's up it, let's up it to say 10 meters. We'll do, we'll do We'll put it in the middle, somewhat in the middle of the 10 meter band. And let's drop this length down here until we get back to where we were electrically before. Now, while we're, while we're electrically where we were before, the capacitance isn't, at this, isn't the same value. And something like that will match this piece of 12 point, 12 and 3 quarter foot piece of coax very closely to 50 ohms with a capacitor. Now, if you cut your piece of transmission line a little bit off, or let's say you have a piece of transmission line that's 13 feet. If you have a piece of transmission line that's 13 feet, this is the wrong, the wrong length of transmission line. All you need to really do is just change your frequency. So let's just change our frequency sum and so we have two components still to match. We have, instead of having like an inductor and a capacitor to match, what we have is we have frequency and a capacitor. So here we are down a little bit below the, the 10 meter band and maybe your transmitter won't transmit there. That's why I moved up to 28.5. But the difference between 12.75 feet and 13 feet, pretty much anybody ought to be able to get closer than that. So let's go back to 12.75 to feet. I think this is about 28.5 something megahertz. And we see it's a little bit off from there. Let's, 
I can drop it down a little bit. It's 28.46, and we change the capacitor back just a little, little bit here and drop its value. Or sorry. Yep, drop its value a little bit. And now we're back to matched again. Now, this circuit is kind of interesting. This is a much more palatable uh, length of transmission line to, to have. It still works exactly the same as the, fir as the first circuit worked. So let's continue on with this. So the next thing we'd like to do is we'd like to know how much power is actually can um, dissipated in a small piece of the transmission line when you're here, or when you're here, and when you're over here, when you're over here, and when you're up here. So what we'll do is we will take this piece of transmission line and we'll break it into three pieces. So let me take it, I'll copy it, I'll paste it, I'll paste it again. What I did was I did control C, control V, control V. Now I have three pieces of transmission line. I need one more thing. I need a control mechanism. Introduced in version 16 was this demon block. Um, it, it has no electrical properties like the N block, the F block, and the Ruse block did where you have to do something in a circuit to, to make the, the circuit pass through them. This has no, no values inside. Consequently, it doesn't need any heading up here. It has more room for putting parameters. Otherwise, it works the same way. So let's just give it a name, something like, and as I do this, this should become pretty obvious what's going on. We'll give it, we'll give it a name called control. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna decide I define a variable called length. So let's just say length. And that will give us a parameter here that we can change. And length is going to be the, 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 length, of the length of this piece of transmission line. So we also need a, a whole length for the entire thing. So let's give a, another variable called, um, I call it, let's call it max length. Now, if I leave it like this, I can enter the value here. I can also set the value here. Since we already know it's going to be 12.75 feet, let's just set it down here. It'll show up here, but I won't be able to change it. 12.75 so feet. Now I want to be able to vary length from 0 to 12.75, and I move around in here. And this piece of transmission line is the piece we're going to, we're going to touch. So we'll set the first piece of transmission line to be of, of uh, length len. So we will say... T1 dot len, which is a parameter, equals, I'm sorry, T1 dot foot equals len. That will set the length here. So if I come up here and I set this to say one foot, this will be moved to one foot. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to do is we're going to set this piece to be Let's just say it's a half a foot long. It's, a, it's long enough to put your hand, o, hand on it. And then this is the residual length. So we will calculate the residual length by saying T3 dot foot. And of course, if you're doing this with um, metric units, there'll be meters and centimeters or in, instead. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same idea. That will equal the max length minus the length uh, which is the first section, minus 0.5 feet. It doesn't matter if there's space is in here or not. So that will give us the last length. So we have 11.25 feet and half a foot and one foot, and we're 12.75. If we set this to be an arithmetic value, and we're going to uh, increment it in, say, 0.5 foot steps, we can move around. And... What we will see here, let's change this to be a different color so it stands out a little bit better. Let's make it black. And let's go back down to zero here. The black segment right here represents segment T2, and that's where you're going to touch. And that will have right now, we have, we have a transmitter that's one watt. Let's make our transmitter have 100 watts. Now we will have seven watts right here in this little sec in this little section. As we increase the length, we notice the we see the black section moving up. The red is the first transmission line segment. The, the uh, purple is the third, and the and the black moves moves along inside of it. So let's move the black over here to where we're on, on this side right here. And now we notice it's only 
two tenths of a watt. So it went from seven watts to two tenths of a watt. That, that's a big difference. So if you had this circuit running and you put your hand at this point in the circuit, which is 5.5 feet plus, plus a half a foot from the shorted into the transmission line, you would feel the transmission line to be cold. However, if you moved your hand to this point right here, now, I'm, now I'm, the black part's right here, at 11 and a half feet, you'd find the transmission line is hot. Let's plot that as a little, in a, as a, instead of going through here and just looking at the data, we can get Sim Smith to plot this for us. So let's plot D dot D1, which is this, this parameter, or this um, block here, and parameter LEN, which is length. So let's plot that. We'll turn the sweep on. And we're going to go from 0, from 0 to 12, well, 11.75 feet. If we go to 12, I mean, if we go to 12, it's too much. So let's look over here. And we want to plot. We need to add something to plot here. And what we're going to plot is we're going to plot. We got to get. We don't have to give it a name, but let's give it a name. Let's call it T two dot P. The power in the segment T two, and that is, and we plot that actually by doing T two dot P, and let's plot it on the power axis, and we're done. So here we are. As we move along, and I can control it here, you can see the little dot moving along. So it's kind of funky. We're, we're, we have the dot shown here, but we're actually putting our hand right on this piece of the transmission line from here. This is where we start putting our hand. We can see that it goes from as high as 7.1 watts to as low as 0.2 watts. And if we divide the two of those up, we see it's a 35 to 1 difference in power. Well, 35 to 1 difference in power is massive. So if you do this experiment and you mark on your piece of transmission line either this point or it could be this point up here near the, near the, near the transmitter. It doesn't matter. Both of them are just, pretty much the same. And this point, and let somebody touch, put their hand on both of these, and you key the transmitter down, it's kind of interesting. This will get very warm and this won't get warm at all. And this is exactly how transmission lines with SWR work. The uh, current that's reflected back adds to the current or subtracts from the current that's going you know, out towards the load. And consequently, what you get is a, a net current. And if the net current is high, you have a lot higher loss in that piece of the transmission line, like these two areas. And if it's low, you don't have much. We could easily have gone and made this piece of transmission line longer if we'd wished. Let's say we decided to make this piece be, well, I should go over here and do something that actually makes sense. Let's go over here and increase the length of this transmission line. I can't control that yet. I have to go over here and like um, either comment it. I can comment it out and, we'll be, and I'll be okay because we're still referencing it so it doesn't go away. I can go over here and I increase this length of the transmission line. Let's say I increase it all the way up to this point right here. That's too much. Something like that. And we match match this. Now this will work just fine too. We have we have we have high current points here, 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 and here, and all on these places over here. If we plot that though, and we have to of course plot it all the way up to 30 to 36 feet or whatever plot up to 36 feet, we will see we have lots of high current points and lots of low current points. However, the, dis the difference between our high current point, which is 2.5 watts, and our low current point, which is 83 milliwatts, is such that if we don't pl put enough power into our circuit, we might not be able to feel the heat here. So you probably don't want to make this too long, because then you'll need a, more, um, a higher power transmitter. And if you make it too short, you don't see both a maximum and a minimum. But you can pick whatever you want to pick. Uh, you can pick a smaller number. For my demo and the pictures I, I showed, I think I had this being 
I think it was 24.9 feet in the experiment I did with the kids. Yeah, it was two, it was two revolutions. And I changed my transmitter frequency or something. Something like that. And that was the experiment that's actually shown in the pictures. And it has three maximums and it has two minimums. But the experiment works either way. And it's a really interesting experiment. You kind of have to play a little bit with the power you put into the th into the circuit to make sure that you can feel the heat. You want to feel the heat quickly when you turn the transmitter on, say like within three or four seconds, and you don't want the coax to melt. Seven watts in a half a foot length piece, one half foot length piece of RG174, I believe will melt RG174. Of course, if you were doing that, you could easily set your transmitter power down back down to maybe 25 or 30 watts and be fine. With the Teflon coax, you don't care. You can run that stuff up to, you know, hotter the temperature than you can actually touch. And for the experiment that I did, I ran it hot enough not to necessarily burn anybody, but it got hot enough that there was no doubt that, that this was hot uh, when you were on one of the, this, the segments over here, and there was no doubt when it, that it was cold over here. Now, if you leave the transmitter on for very long, you'll start to notice ingress uh, and egress of heat from the high and low current points. And as the transmission line itself conducts the heat away from the area or towards the, the you know, the, the heat will go away from the, from the uh, areas where it's uh, hotter. So you have to use it, do the experiment for a little while, and then you have to key, unkey the transmitter and give the uh, cable a chance to uh, cool down. But then you can do the experiment again. And the experiment is one of those things that's... Um, you you remember it more than you remember sometimes the theory behind it, which is uh, you know kind of interesting uh, the way way we learn. But nevertheless, I thought this might be an experiment that people would find interesting to do. It's easy to do. In my case, I tapped this on with a T connector. You could solder it onto onto the piece of transmission line. There's nothing to stop you from putting a piece of transmission line between the generator and this point if it's if it's more convenient than not to have the transmitter sitting right where people are nearby. This this piece will here will run with low S. So excuse me, this piece right here will run with low SWR and will have very little loss. And in the case that I did here, instead of having uh, seven watts here, we had four and a. Uh, let's see, what does it say? 3 point, oh, 3, 3 point, 3 point 3.7 watts, and we had an eighth of a watt. So that's still hugely different, and consequently it was easy to tell between, between a lot of heat and no heat. Anyways, hope everyone's enjoyed this experiment. If you like it, please, um, please give me a thumbs up and say so. If you don't like these kind of um, videos, let me know also. Thank you very much.